Moved you back to the front, David. Uh, apparently, my bald spot was too prominent in the video last time, so they, they asked me to move over. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Christy said it looked better if y'all face this way. Hey, Brandy, shut that door. Well, 
Any other general business? Any public comments? Okay. No public comment. We'll move to item number seven. Discuss and consider extending and modified proclamation declaring a local disaster. It, is, it would expire tonight at midnight. We had a meeting. We had a meeting with uh, yesterday with the district judge, uh, Judge uh, Martin, Judge Winters, Cardinal, BT McAllister, Management, Management, Emergency Management Coordinator, uh, Tom McCurry, our district attorney, and uh, Sheriff's Office. To go over this proclamation. There is some I think we need to modify. And uh, one thing we did was in Owen, we eliminated paragraph six, which was uh, the limit of large gatherings, eliminated uh, section seven, engaging in other essential outdoor activities. Uh, we did add. And we changed we had and changed uh nine and made it by eliminating those two you move uh nine of seven and what it says <coughs> is business and places of worship in accordance with the GA 18 the governor's report for open Texas in addition to a central Business in the following categories of business may be open in August and possible limitations and protocols established by the governor in his report retail, restaurants, movie theaters, museums, libraries, outdoor sports involving less than four people, churches and places of worship, and single person offices, which is exactly what he named in his order. Uh, it would remain in effect. Till May 13th. Yeah. That was the our understanding. Well, that was our understanding. You know, I raised one objection yesterday in the meeting. Uh, I think we're going to have an open discussion here on, on the whole thing. Uh, my, my, my point is that, uh, yeah, uh, the governor's order here is doesn't fit everything. One size doesn't fit all. I mean, counties, uh, smaller counties, it doesn't, it's not a fit for, for smaller counties. It, it really takes the ways of, to control uh, the local elected officials uh, and have any say about their businesses. Uh, it's, it's amazing to me that, that uh, uh, you can go into a liquor store because the governor had declared those essential and, and fumble around and buy, buy a bottle of whiskey, but you can't buy an appointment, go in and get a haircut. Uh, it, it just, it's, it's just, uh, I don't get it, you know? <laughs> well, I think uh, it goes to the social distance. Well, let, let's start trusting our people to social distance. Let's, let's start trusting our people to, to abide by the CDC rule that's given out there. Okay, so you, yeah. you believe in social distancing? Yeah, I believe in social distancing. So how would you get a haircut? Well, okay, you follow the CDC rules and regulations. You have uh, you have clubs, you have a mask. The participant has a mask. I mean, Did you, stay six feet apart? You, you can't stay six feet apart, but, but you know, come on. You're, you're, uh, you're uh, one person in there, one person at a time. Uh, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, I, whatever. I mean, that's just my. You know, I know. <laughs> and it's difficult. It is a very difficult. I think uh, I'm, I'm with us today. Uh, it's difficult to follow those governor's orders when they're changing every day. Tom, if you would like to address. Well, and a lot of it doesn't make sense to me either. But the bottom line is 
that, that now the governor has made it clear that counties or cities don't have the authority to open anything that he has no. Uh, I know a county tried to do that yesterday. They've already been slapped down. The State Department of Licensing and Regulation has, has issued a press release that says that they will uh, jerk the license of the salon that does that um, because it's in defiance of the governor's order. Um, Dallas is already, they passed some salons, try it. They've been issued citations, um, all of that. It, I agree. I agree a lot. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I mean, but we don't have the authority to change that. That's my, that's what well, that's, 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 so the governor is calling the shot from coming out. He got us all called a shot going into it. Mm -hmm. If we wanted to be more strict, but now he stood there and said he's taking control. I think all this stuff is not necessary. We don't need to do anything now because the governor is taking control. He's made it very clear that, that coming out part is going to be by his orders. But in in, in one point of view, if we don't have a Proclamation declaring a local disaster, then then we forfeit the funds of any that we could uh, get back from. Is that correct? That is correct. The whole state of Texas is under disaster. He's, de he's declared a disaster for the whole state of Texas. So we're under disaster when we're not coming out. But so, he, can't, he can't apply for, for grants and things like that in the county. He can do it for the state, but if the counties don't have a an order in place, then, then we don't have the opportunity to block those funds if, if anything happens up and then anything happens up. Okay, let's stay in a disaster. As far as those stipulations on what people do, what they can't do, right now, that's not our concern. He's taking it And that's what, it, 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 and that's the reason we reference in accordance with GA18, uh, GA the governor's report, which he, he's got a something page report. Yeah. Got to you know, reopen and it references that in, in your the governor's report to open cases. Uh, so, this is basically just a proclamation saying, hey, we're going by what the governor's. Now, I would like, and the next item that's going to be on the agenda is the courthouse and other offices closed to public access. There's discussion on that, and what we had discussion this morning is that I would like to add another section, a section where if you look at this section 10, add another section, uh, 11, and it's going to cover the next agenda item, but I would like to entertain the closing of the courthouse itself for central needs, let that and add into this amended uh, proclamation declaring a local disaster, add number 11, the Vanda County Courthouse and County offices will remain open to the public with full staff by appointment only beginning Monday, May the 4th. And that's where we bring all the workers back. We bring all the workers back uh, to the county work with full staff and, and like auto restoration, they start registering vehicles now. Uh, by appointment on They call, they start registering their vehicles. The offices are open. We still operate here in the courthouse. You know, the offices are open uh, with full staff. We bring them back and by appointment on They can call, set up an appointment, come in, and we're, we're, we're back with full staff. Now that, and then you would allow the next item that we're going to discuss, it would be included in the proclamation and have one document uh, covering covering. We don't have any problem with it. All right. 
I believe we just addressed that in the problem. So no action needs to be taken on it. I'm going to say you to and address and I don't understand. Agree? Anyone disagree with that? Okay. We'll move to item number nine. Discuss and consider assigning the proclamation declaring the month of May as motorcycle safety and awareness month. Mike, is there anyone out there for motorcycle safety and awareness month? Motorcycle safety and awareness. <laughs> Represent that proclamation. Yes, sir. Okay. I'll read the proclamation. <clears throat> proclamation of motorcycle safety, whereas today's society is finding more citizens involved in motorcycles on the roads of our county. Whereas motorcyclists are roughly unprotected and therefore more prone to injury or death in a crash than other vehicle drivers. Whereas campaigns have helped inform. Riders and motor motorists alike on motorcycle safety issues to reduce motorcycle related risks, injuries, and most of all fatality through a comprehensive approach to motorcycle safety. Whereas it is the responsibility of all to put themselves behind the wheel to become aware of motorcyclists, regarding them with the same respect as other vehicles traveling the highways of this country. It's the responsibility of riders and motorists alike to obey all traffic laws and safety rules, and whereas urging all cities, citizens of our community to become aware of the inherent danger involved in operating motorcycles and for riders and motor, motorists alike to give each other mutual respect. That is all. Is there a motion to approve the uh, proclamation of motorcycle safety? So moved. Got a motion by Commissioner Melton. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Brown. <clears throat> All in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Now, therefore, I've done uh, Judge Dr. Patrick and the county judge together with the commissioners of the court of Benson County will hereby proclaim the month of May as Motorcycle Safety and Awareness Month this county. Further, I urge all residents to do their part to increase safety and awareness in our community. Item number 10 discuss and consider extension of from the families first of the coronavirus response act. Uh, for certain key employees. Dan, Dan Mossieri. Dan, we're on item number 10, discuss and consider extension of the payments first coronavirus response act for certain key employees. Okay, that's something that our Texas Association of Counties representatives, uh, they had a webinar to discuss this. And uh, if we were to waive, it's one, three, and five. The ones that I identified with you, um, what that does is keeps our key and essential folks mainly our law enforcement and our road and bridge crews from utilizing those various exemptions of the FSCRA. But they still, if they are to become ill or if they're caring for a family member who is ill, they still get the full benefit of that FSCRA. So exempting them ensures that we have the personnel necessary to conduct the business to maintain our jail, to maintain our patrol staff, maintain our roads and bridges. That's what we're talking about. Do you have anything? Uh, okay. <laughs> the, the, uh, okay. Is there any questions for Dan? <clears throat> I was thinking that the uh, we should probably have these 
these one, two, three, four, five, and six, uh, these qualifying reasons for belief. I think we should have them. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know if we can take those away, those exemptions away. We can. Um, in that webinar with Texas Association of Counties, that there was a bunch of people in there discussing if it was a, a possibility to do this. They agree that yes, it is a possibility if those people are key and essential to maintain our roadways for emergency services. That's key and essential. Maintain our jails, that's key and essential. And to maintain our ability to provide law enforcement throughout the county, we've got to be able to do those. And so that's where this exemption comes in. So, so basically, you're saying, I guess you're saying that those key personnel, emergency workers, are really not eligible for administrative time during these days. Administrative time is a whole different thing. This is just an exemption from the famous parts of the coronavirus response. That's correct. And when this is over, this right, be, this would be here. Correct. The way I understand it, these things are mandatory. We have not exempted people that we have to have. That's correct. Everybody else is mandatory. That gives what they want or not. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a choice. So it's like, right. Federal guys. They get it where we want it. Yep. Is there a motion? Uh, I make a motion to fans in county exempt deputy dispatcher, corrections officer, juvenile supervisor officer, room bridge um, employees. From items one, four, and five of the FFCRA <coughs> of this COVID 19 Act. Good. That's a motion. Is there a second? second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Pearson, second by Commissioner Brown. Any other questions or discussion? Let me just say one thing. So, so what you want the example number five, you want to exempt someone who's caring for his or her child in school or place of care is closed. Our, our child care provider is unavailable due, due to uh, COVID 19. That's correct. No, no, that means they can still come to work, but you don't exempt them and they cannot come to work. They cannot come right. perform the yes. uh, very essential duties. Right. So this exempt them from that so that they can they're required that, that they can still come in. Yeah. If you don't exempt them, that one of these things are you're gone. Well, why wouldn't you want your employees to take care of their child? They still can. They still can. They, they still can. If they say, I'm staying here, I'm not coming in. But if you don't right. exempt them, they don't have the, they don't right. have, they can't say that, hey, I'm going to come to work with them. Right. So, it's now been determined that the school is not going to start up again. If Chief Bates has a deputy whose child is no longer in school, that deputy would be off work until September. It's far better that we exempt them and let's find a way that they can get their child care by some other avenue instead of that employees staying at home until the school was to start back. What do they do in the summer anyway? I don't know. I mean, that, My children are all grown. I don't know what they do. Childcare is supposed to be open for, it children, is. for children that we send to school. It children. is. And even, and even wider swap than that, I can tell you. Some more, some more. Some and, so, yeah, I don't know. I would agree. Some might be. Any yeah. other questions or well, discussion with that? Let's, let's talk this and then uh, come forward. In hearing for an individual subject to an order described in one or self quarantine as described in two. So, so you're going to make somebody come to work. No, 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 no,
they use the level if they don't want to. Can't make them. Can't yeah. make them. Is that your opinion? That is my opinion, sure. Well, I, I just want to make yeah, get that cleared up before we vote. Yeah. Any other questions or discussion? Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same time. Motion carried. Item number 11 discuss and consider employee schedule, working from home, and limited on administrative time during the current. Uh, health crisis. I think we covered some of that by adding that paragraph. I mean, yeah, you know, that section in the where it says the Vanda County uh, Fort Allen County offices will remain open to the public for the full staff by appointment only uh, beginning May the 4th, 2020. I think we covered some of that. Well, that was the discussion we had with the proclamation. And then, hey, everyone's coming back to work. Great. Do we even need any action on that? Not necessarily. Um, because it, in, in my opinion, from my perspective, it seems like we're starting to turn the corner on this and things are beginning to open. Had we stayed the course that we had been on, then I would think you would need to provide guidance that, that we missed the opportunity to provide way back in March. So if we're turning the corner and everybody is coming back to work, then you likely don't need any action on that item. What about the benefit of the administration? Well, that's up to you guys. And I know what we talked about in our meeting, we talked about creating a limit of 16 hours per week. And it was also suggested 12 hours per week. But if you guys would like to do that, you sure can. Well, we put it in the pop. We've already voted this one. We put it in the proclamation that the Vanzant County Courthouse and County Office will be open to the public with full staff by appointment only beginning May starting Monday. Okay. And so that, I think that was. I don't Yeah, your your current policy says that any elected official has the authority to grant paid or unpaid administrative time to any of their employees for any reason, up to a cap of 80 hours. Now during this pandemic, we have people who have exceeded the 80 hours, but that's where we missed the boat and didn't provide the guidance to tell people how we would do it. So we just kind of have to wash that, you know, whatever happened, happened. But if we want to make a change for the future, you know, we could easily add, you know, only a maximum of 16 hours per week or whatever number you set. Uh, you could do all kinds of things. An another um, item that I thought about in the shower this morning, uh, we have employees who have been granted paid administrative time yet are sitting on a giant pile of comp time. And Van County has the authority to require employees to earn comp time at the county's convenience. So instead of granting paid administrative time, you could require um, if you have an employee off for a week, you could require them to use that comp time in lieu of paid administrative time. I think they should. But you have to create that policy. Well, that would be on our handbook. Right. And since we're on the topic, I, I wrote it up for you guys. You could just pass this policy. Yeah. We're going to go to the job. Actually, I had it right off first, and then uh -huh. so page one is the current policy. Page two is what I thought about this morning, and it, it just talked about requiring an employee who has a food comp time to use that first before we grant administrative time of pay. Yeah. Let me make let me clear this up. My understanding of the 
administrative time is it's not working at home. It's no, if you're working at home, you're working. Okay, so administrative time is just you're off on vacation or whatever. You're off, not required to report to work, still being paid or not, it's up to the elected official, and all benefits continue. Is that clear that up for you, Chief? Yes. That's not what we were told when right. we started. Well, it's always been in the policy. The policy's been around since like 2017 when I first wrote it. So it's it's been in the policy that couple times. The only question I've got is I kind of shared that in there yesterday. And then it's administratively, and I'll tell you, I mean, I've used it through this, which I was using it wrong, I guess. Uh, I would say we were instructed one way. Right. My main concern is I've had an issue. I've had a deputy uh, injured in the line of duty. And I mean, not just a deputy, but y'all would have a county employee or any days that the full workers' comp actually takes effect and starts paying them. Eight days. Okay. My point on that is I use administrative leave because I think if a county employee is injured on the job, they should not have to burn their sick vacation or comp time for that eight days. And you've always had the authority to do that. Well, that's one thing I want to make sure is that if we put this policy, I still have that authority to put that person on paid administrative leave for eight days before workers' comp can take effect. Because I do not believe if somebody's injured on the job, it should come out of their. Uh, Personal benefits, comp time, sick time. Yeah, I agree. And, and the way I see it, gentlemen, there's two separate issues here. There's the disaster issue, and then there's just the regular admin leave policy. On the disaster issue, like Chief, I was instructed to use administrative leave because I was told that our timesheet are present. Are you present? So those people that have been working from home, I mean, I've given out hundreds of hours of administrative leave for people who my instructions to them were you be at your house, you'd be available to me if I need you, you'd be answering your emails, you'd be doing things like uploading videos from home, things that can be done on the laptop from home, but not physically present in the office. So I've used administrative leave for that because that's what I thought I was instructed to do. Maybe that's wrong. I can go back through the timesheets and correct that. I do not believe in a time of natural disaster, be it a tornado, um, which we're likely to see again, unfortunately, COVID 19, which I hope we never see again. Um, I do not believe in a time of disaster that an employee should be required to use vacation, sick, or comp time. I believe that that is beyond their control. Comp time they've earned by giving us hours they didn't have to give us. They've earned that. Um, and I believe that it's a natural disaster um, that they should not have to use their comp time. So I, or an injury, they should not have to use their comp time. So I would personally, as a department, had a closing policy that required them to use comp time before admin time could be used. Um, in every situation. That's the disaster issue. Then the separate issue is whether we as a county want to, or whether you guys as the administrators, leaders of the county, policymakers of the county, want to limit a department head's ability to put, um, to give administrative leave. It's my understanding that, that we have had a policy that a department head can do up to 80 hours a year. Correct. Uh, it, it's very open. It says up to 80 hours. And if you're asking me to interpret that, I'd say for pay period. It, it's right now up to interpretation because it is purposefully vague. Okay. So I might recommend closing yeah. on it, but, um, <laughs> but I would be opposed to any type of limit other than an annual limit. Um, I, I thought wrongly so that it was 80 hours a year, but I would be opposed to any type of limit other than an annual limit. And here's my reason. We have some very, very good employees here. Um, 
we all know, I don't want to name names on public record, but, but we all know there was an employee who was seriously injured um, last fall and needed more, uh, needed some admin leave to make sure that she got a pay pay. Um, and I think department heads who supervise those employees, who know which ones are, are worthy of it and which ones aren't, if there are any that aren't, should have the ability to give a full week's worth, a full two weeks worth after they've used all their personal leave, including the comp um, in in the situation of a personal disaster, um, um, an, an illness, an injury, car wreck, where they're, where they're totally incapacitated for a while, um, heaven forbid, cancer treatments where they're totally incapacitated for a while. That type of situation, I, I, I believe the department head, not without limit, certainly, but I believe the department head should have the ability um, to do that in some amount, maybe 80 hours annually. And they do right now up to 80 hours. It also says you can exceed the 80 hours with prior approval of the commissioner's court. So, given an example like an injury report, we lose out for X number of weeks, there's plenty of time to come. To the commissioner's court and say, hey, I need more than 80. I need 180. There's plenty of time for that, and the policy, the way it's written, allows for that. The, the other issue that I have at the sheriff's office on the administrative time one of the other issues that I use administrative time for is uh, that's how a lot of times, uh, if we have an internal investigation, I have to put that employee. Um, administratively, depending on what he's either with pay or without pay, and sometimes that can go into well, we just had one employee, it's been about two months, I believe, that I had to keep that person off on administrative leave. So, I understand what you're saying, but uh, there's going to be certain circumstances if there are uh, off street law shooting, kind of mandatory administrative leave. Uh, disciplinary issue or whatever, and then my other main issue is if I have somebody who's in the line of duty, I just don't believe that they should have to use their personal time, it should be administrative time. Well, I, I, I think it's all covered. Y'all yeah. y'all answered all the questions. It's got to be per year because if it was per pay period, I'll be getting the pay period taken out. Right. Unless you're on the court. So it's got to be per year, or you wouldn't have to come to the court. And if it is a year, and you can get more than 80, and all you've got to do is come to this court and say, hey, I've got this guy here that thinks this is what happened, or this person, I said, yeah, this person, but this is what happened, and I'm petitioning this court to extend this for more than 80 dollars. Our whole deal is right now, if you did it exactly right, we wanted you to put that in, even though your people were working from home, we wanted that in at that end time so we could track it. In case right. there was a smoke up there that we might be, get reimbursed with the cost. And I so noted, it right. I noted, and in, and in the notes, I put COVID 19. Yeah, I mean, you did it right. And I'm with you, Commissioner. I think 80 hours per year. I'm just, as the department head, opposed to it being lower than that. That's what I understood the agenda. And Tony, were you talking about an off duty injury or an on duty when you were talking about extra? Uh, um, an off duty injury, a personal, you know, yeah. health like cancer or something like that. Um, right now, as I understand it, the department has the ability to give, let's say, the person has. has laid up in a hospital because of a car wreck on personal time. They used all their sick leave, they used all their vacation, they used all their comp. And I as a department head would have the ability to give them two more weeks uh, if, if I felt they were worthy of such. Um, uh, now for an on-duty injury, I believe we can take all yeah, that. Right. But I just didn't want to see that 80 number low. Um, especially something like 12 or 16 before I would have to come back to you with 80, you know, I could come, 
there's like you said, there's time for me to come in and talk to y'all, put it on the agenda in the executive session and talk to y'all. If it's 12 or 16, there's not. It does a lot of Another thing, Tom, is not that not we decided that we're going back to work. What we need to address is the admin time for this COVID 19. That should stop now. That's right. If you don't, if you got an employee that is uncomfortable and they don't think they ought to be here, and they, they want to take off and burn their comp time their vacation there and look into the they, they feel unsafe coming. So I don't know if you need a motion, but I believe you should address that and put that 80 hour down on that. Well, I don't think, uh, I don't think we need to know that you're saying. I mean, the, well, he said it's not in the box now, he said 80 hour. He thought it was for a factory, she thought it was for a year. I said for Adrian, because that is the most generous community yeah. possible. Yeah. So here's what I will do. Based on this discussion, I will bring to you at the next commission report an amended policy, policy 289, to include verbiage that identifies it as per year. So you don't have to decide anything on that. I'm going to give you to the next commissioner's report for you to approve of that policy. And that that can come to petition this court if they want to go over it. Yeah, that's well, already. Let's, 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 okay, let's talk about this. In disasters, uh, in disaster situations, deputies and whatever, are they eligible for administration benefits? First responders? No, I don't think so. Uh, you wouldn't give a deputy uh, administrative time if we got a disaster, would you? You get caught. You wouldn't. You wouldn't give them anything. You just. You got to work. Right. Right. Yeah. Unless you got injured. Yeah, unless you got yeah. injured. That doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not saying that I think we would be given a benefit and say taking off administrative time in the disaster because we got to have all hands on right. that. It's, I mean, that don't even apply there. This yeah. is just, uh, let's say, well, I, I can't put a scenario. Let's say, even though we're in this disaster uh, decoration right now, I have a deputy that goes out here and gets involved in the officer shooting right yeah, I've got to clean. Yeah, and um, there's there's certain right. 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 So I don't think we need it. Any action will come to the With the exception of the, these don't come back. Well, the exception of there's no more admin time for COVID time. Right, they're coming to work. We addressed that in the proclamation. Yeah, yeah. that wouldn't, that shouldn't be in that uh, amendment of keeping right. But no, that's no. already taken care of. Yeah, that's, that's correct. That's already taken care of. Easy clocking and force it into net data 
So it will take the burden of calculating every day per employee off of the treasurer's office, and now it will be a computerized function. Yeah, so we're ready to do that. My only caution is this puts greater emphasis on the supervisors to ensure that their employees' time cards are correct. Because if they are not correct, there won't be a place to fix it. They will, if there's an error and it shows that an employee worked 142 hours, they will get paid for 142 hours. If there's an error and it shows they only worked seven hours, they will get paid for seven hours. So the emphasis is on the supervisors to ensure that their time cards are correct, as it has always been, yet now there will be true consequences for it. The supervisor not doing their part. I got a comment on that. Uh, you know, there's this pretty much every time these topics come up, but I still don't have to go to my sergeants and get on and you know, approve their shifts and employees' time sheet. Right now, it's left up to either uh, me or the captains to get on there and approve it. And we I had it that way. I had it that way where your sergeants could approve it, but then you guys were having discussions over there and you wanted to control back to just you and Captain Sharpie group. So I took it away. It can be any way we want. Well, the problem is it wasn't working anyway. Last meeting we had, uh, basically you said they had to do some modifications because of the IT. Well, what, what you were asking for was for the sergeants to approve all their people and then for someone, you or someone else, have oversight over the sergeants to approve the sergeants. Doesn't work that way. If you're an approver, you're an approver. You can approve the people below you and you can approve yourself. There's no person above you that approves. Well, that's just how it's set up. Because I've got shifts out here that work 24 hours a day. The captain and myself, we don't know when they take off. Uh, and it comes back down to us on um, Sunday morning to sit down and start approving this. Well, I'm approving it basically side and same. And the sergeants, the way it should work is the sergeants should be able to approve their shift because they know when their employees work. Well, then it should come down to the captain, not only when the sergeants work, it should approve their shift. Then I should go in or the Ultimately, the administration is going to be able to approve their time. Kind of stair step deal. We don't have that. They got a gun shot. I don't know. It makes sense. It makes total sense. I agree with you. That's what it should be. It's a, a steps of approval. So, and I mean, I'm taking the captain's word when I. Well, first of all, he's right. I can't approve the captains. And that was the problem we have with the sergeants. I mean, we've got uh, first line of supervision down here, but nobody approves theirs. Because once you have approval, authorization, nobody else can approve it. That's just like mine. When I turn mine, and even though I don't have to turn the time machine, I fill mine out, nobody, nobody approves mine. But what I'm saying is the sergeant should have. <clears throat> Could the sergeants look at it and say that and send you an email saying that all the issues is correct? I'm not so sure that the sergeants even have access to look at their people now. Because now, if somebody makes a mistake, they have to clock in or clock out or need to exit, uh, add sick time or something, you can't go to the sergeant, you have to either come to the captain or me, and I have to it. I spend more time on these talking now uh, than I've ever spent. It's a good thing, but we've got 80 employees out there, well, 78. But I need to have it to where it is fair step where the sergeant can approve his crew because he's responsible for his seven, six, seven guys. Then the captain is responsible for the sergeants, and then I'm responsible for the captains. And it goes both ways on the operation side and the teaching side. Because basically what I'm doing right now is I'm clicking off, approving something that I can't verify. 
No way to set it up that way, man. That's a developer or IT question. And so we went through this a month or two ago, and I thought we were going to try to get that. And we still don't have access. Because I don't that developer. I mean, this is a high grade. I'm sure you all this. He should be able to prove anybody in his organization. But somebody that's lower in his organization should not be able to prove him or their sale. Well, the whole idea of this was to take the pressure off of our county treasurer and not give him well, that was the whole idea. Thing. But that was definitely a big part of it. Well, <laughs> the big part of it hadn't worked out. No, I because agree because we haven't taken that step. Okay. And I'm telling you, we're ready to take that step. If we're, if that, what do you say? Let me make a comment. I'm trying to go along with what you're saying. I don't know about who to prove what I don't want him to do that. But definitely somebody needs to be able to do it. But we're still going through the issue for at some point I have to go on process of paper. You get to that point, you don't have a lot of I'm still getting conscious of not proof. It says penny. But I mean so somebody had money in, whoever that is, me for my people had money in approved it, so they haven't looked at it. So they, they're just out there. And a good example I, I got from yesterday, I call any name, but I had a call yesterday. An employee was short, last pay period, 11 hours. I heard about it yesterday after I run a payroll for this thing. So my point was, and I got to look and see the time she should not been approved. So if they had been approved and somebody looked at it, I'm hoping someone would have caught that at some point. But you know, this employee just now comes back. There's a reason for it, but it doesn't have know about me. I work on payroll for this time. So now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get this time for payroll. Like my point is it's really important for me to make sure you improve. You're, you're responsible for your service. Yours, yours, and yours on down to make sure yours are approved or whoever's in charge of it. I mean, that doesn't matter to me. That is, I need to make someone look at it. And I give you another example yesterday. I had one a guy that only works 80 hours. He had 0.6 of an hour. That's it. Well, I think that's not bad. You know, they got to get 80 hours. But someone had approved that. So I went with it. Now I checked on the later, sure enough, that's that's correct. It was a reason for it. But when I see that approved, normally that tells me somebody looked at it and they're saying, well, that's correct. I don't have time to go check with everybody, huh? Every situation. So I just looked at that and I went with it because that's what it don't look right. But this guy, he's in charge of improvement, he approves on home. So it comes back and I now, you approve it. So that's my point exactly. Because when I'm going through the deputies, basically what I'm looking for is to make sure there was no misclock ins or misclock outs. And basically all I can do is make sure they got 86 hours. Because I don't know what shifts they work, how many hours they work. So if there's something in there, they got over 86 hours and they had used to clock in and clock out. I'm afraid. Well, then the sergeant will come back and go, well, you know, I meant to tell you. Because I can't change it, you know. Uh, this happened at two o'clock in the morning or something. And so that's why I need my tears to where I can hold my sergeant accountable when it gets to me or the captain. I can go down to the captain and go, okay, why did you not catch this? But if, but if he won't come to you and tell you that before you're approving it, how's he going to approve the time cards? And then you approve him. Okay, well, I said, we have people in the manage and manage sheriff's office. We work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we deal with life and death. So, I mean, if you have an issue here, the next time you're out on a staffing call, uh, the time sheets really don't make sure. I you understand know, I that. Sorry. Uh, I'm just telling you, everywhere I've ever worked, in law enforcement or otherwise, there is a tier to approving time sheets. Thanks, uh, yeah. I think at some point we're going to have to run it. I mean, we're getting there. And we're, I think we're going to learn every time we run it. We're going to, there's going to be issues. And we're going to see them at that point. I just think there's nothing around it. It's not going to be perfect. We're just going to run it. Try to look at it first, especially and see how it goes. I don't know. At some point, you just go, you got to do it. 
So you've got to be responsible for their I mean, their I agree. It's not like they're in the nature, especially for you. I, I can't imagine what you're going through. But I mean, the best questions is one for me. One of the biggest issues. Yeah, people are not checking to see if they're going to get the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that's what you're going to do. But they're going to be in the same boat. Yeah, they're going to be in the same boat. Yeah, they're going to be in the same boat. Yeah, they're going to be in the same boat. Yeah, they're going to be in the same boat. Yeah, they're going to be in the same boat. Yeah, they're going to be in the same boat. Yeah, they're going to be in the same boat. Yeah, they're going to be in the same boat. Yeah, they're going to be in the same boat. Yeah, they're going to be in the same boat. Yeah, they're going to be in the same boat. Yeah, they're going to be in the same boat. Yeah, they're going Got to get punched out. This kid's time keeps going. So that's going to change what he gets paid. Probably going to get paid a lot more than he's supposed to. But anyway, we'll have to deal with it. Probably soon. I know, I know that I've requested for on the timesheet for it to have a break uh, on the 40 hours because I've made errors looking at the timesheets. Like if someone didn't come in for a full day or something, and I look at the bottom number and it shows me that they still had 80 hours or 81 hours and I approve it because I'm looking 80 hours, 40, 40. Okay, we're good. Except for maybe that first week they missed the day and they worked over, stayed during lunch or whatever and still got to the 80. And then they get paid short because either we've used okay. sick time and that's happened a couple of times and then they did advise me, hey, make sure you're looking at the breakdown on the fifth day that's, that's 40. Point. That should well, be separated. I need that separated. Yeah. 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 You said employees yeah. are only 40 hours. They need to be sure they feel real bad about who told 80 hours. That's but 40 hour employee that doesn't work that. Mm -hmm. You're going to work 36 that first week. You turn around and work next week. Next week, you got 80. That, that changed very short. But I think it should have a, if it would have a breakup, and I don't know if you're telling me it does. It's not going to be anytime soon. You can change that view right off where it says the time period. You can make that a one week time period. That's what you can do. Okay. See, I have the same problem. I mean, my civilian state, well, dispatch, they're on the 40 hour week, but they're scheduled. They work 36 hours in one week and three weeks next. And I get called up and I was doing the exact same thing. I was, I was going to have eight as long as they have 80 hours. We're good. They don't need to put in a request for if they have 88 hours. I'm thinking, well, they don't need to have a sick day here because they are not. Yeah. But then I get with Annie and Kenny, well, no, they're week by week. So, and that causes another problem with me going through the figuring out, uh, you know, the 40 hour employees compared to my, the rest of my staff. They've got 86, which is a period, we're good to go. You know, uh, it's our so service needs to be modeled. So, Dan, are you in a position to say we're ready to make the last step? I think that we are. There's a lot of discussion going on, but I think all of this can be resolved locally at each individual office. I don't think we need to alter software to fit an individual office's particular needs. There's ways to do exactly what everybody wants to do. You've got to look day by day. You've got to schedule correctly. You've got to validate and approve the time cards. Sure, I'm sure Scott and the developers could alter the software that we bought, but we as individuals and supervisors can do exactly what we want to do. No, I just worry. I just worry. We, 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 we need to offer that software because yes. that's the way it's saying. And then I need to be approving, and all these gentlemen here need to be approving their form. But it is right now, our foreman are approving themselves. And that's yeah. not correct. We also need in that software, when you have missed uh, uh, somebody done clock out, it needs to send a message to that, to that supervisor saying, is this correct? Is this person work for, for five days in a row? The message is in there, but you've got to go in and look at it. You're wanting the system to email you and slide you. When when we talked about all of this 10 months ago, we as the supervisors and elected officials, we have a responsibility to view that, whether it was the old paper time sheets or this new system. And if the whole heartburn on this is that it's not notifying me. I want a text message. Well, we all still have that responsibility to look at these time sheets and time cards. And 
if you're not going to do it till you get a text, no, I don't know what to do Well, that that was Wednesday. So if I got so if a guy goes in there and there's a mistake, and the train looks in there, there's a message there for him. There's a little symbol that this okay. the, the caution symbol. It's in yellow and it's got a big exclamation mark. And all we need is a tears. But not on the 40 hours. Nothing shows up. Not on the 40. Well, let's see the problem now. My heart's beating. We didn't see that. All they can do is they're on. So it's coming back to me again. And the whole big deal here is we'll be accurate on these timesheets. We're not falsifying the timesheets. That's an idea. Can you check on that stuff? Should they get tears? I can tell you right now. I can modify that stuff. Yeah, I don't know how far they're going to go into modifying their software just to fit our scenario. But there are ways, like Dan said, a lot of this would already work that way. Turn it on, work it. That's all we got to do is get the uh, sergeants to be able to look at it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we can move it back to that. We can move it to whatever level. And I, I understand what you're saying about I want to be able to approve my sergeant or my foreman. But if you're trusting that person to approve seven other people and you don't want to trust him to approve his own time sheet, maybe that's the problem. No. I'm not trusting him. Every four hours of work, we have it. I mean, you know, how long? I spent 31 years. It's all. That's the way it's working. The sergeant or corporal, you break that in, but that corporal ship proves his guys. Then it goes to the sergeant. Then from the sergeant, I'm going to the lieutenant. Lieutenant to the captain. Then up to uh, assistant chief of order. So, like I said, we've got 80 employees out there. It's not a trust issue. The tech is not. Yeah, I know. And, and I'm not. I'm not arguing just for the sake of being argumentative here. I'm saying we bought software. This is the capability of the software. And I, I don't see a way to make it work the way that each of us want each little component. But we've got something that works. And if we apply our own checks and balances to it, we can get the job done instead of waiting on a developer to try and alter it fit what he wants and she wants and he wants. Well, maybe we should have checked with the largest department out there on how they need to do things before we went out and all software. I think we did. And I think yeah, every you know. other department except for probably law enforcement or whatever works on the 40. And so I just know because I've had a couple issues with that where I was looking at the bottom of the time sheet as long as they made 80, I was approving it until I got called downstairs actually when my employees got paid short and I went downstairs and then we figured out okay you need to be looking when you look at that first week make sure they've got the five days in there and it doesn't tell you they had 40 hours you have to calculate it and make sure it's a 40 All and then do the next one. Somebody to check with, with the company that put this out and see if they find you available. I, I believe they are. I don't believe that a time clock Company would put out a product that you couldn't have two years of supervision. I just got it. I, I can't, I cannot, cannot concept that in my mind of all the technology that we had available to us today. And that, and that what I was asking for, and what I think all of us need, you know what? I believe it's there. I just don't, I just can't get nobody to call and find out. So for that, I, are, are we ready to take uh, the last statement? I'm having a motion to move the last statement. Take the last statement. Got a motion by. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say you better fill out a paper time sheet. You better fill out a paper time sheet. You better fill out a paper time sheet for a while until this thing gets, gets off the. Right. You had to take the last statement. Yeah. Well, we've been doing this for eight months. I don't think we need a paper time sheet. We have, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, not to turn in. I'm saying for our own guys, we probably need to fill out a time sheet that's foreign. All of them have access to it on their cell phone. Every employee, down to the lowest level employee we have, has access to see their time card, schedules, time off, everything on their cell phone. Anybody can do it. You can do it on a home computer, 
You can see it anywhere you want. And we never stop doing the pipe types. So yes. Because we have to keep the pipe to be able to compare it to the, to the, to the computer. Yeah. Which is that a lot more to do. Have a motion, have a second. Any other discussion? Questions? The motion was to implement the last step of the easement process. Okay. All in favor say aye. Right. Those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item number 13 discusses the Center Road Bridge Precinct 4 purchase in the 1997 International 2700 distributor truck for 25 uh, That's my name. John, I uh, uh, find the truck from the really good uh, And we're going to start doing some uh, chip sending on our own, save a little money. And uh, so we have to have a distributor truck too. That's what we're doing. Is that a motion? That's a motion. Second. Got a second by Commissioner Pearson. Question to discussion. Commissioner West, being none, all in favor say aye. Those uh, opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item number 14, discuss the center of Cunningham Cunningham site, flat, and precinct two. That's your approach? I believe it's just better. In fact, I've been out here with Cunningham State. You complied with all the regulations of the subdivisions and rules and regulations. So I'll make a motion that we approve this. Okay. Motion by Commissioner uh, Melton. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner West. Any questions or discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item number 15 discuss and consider approving the matter of the state's plan in precinct three. I do have a regular notice. I'll call you know, I've met all the requirements on that motion. Got a motion by Commissioner Pierce, second by Commissioner Brown. Any questions or discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item number 16 thank you Mr. thank you for being here thank you <laughs> the uh, item number 16 discuss and consider award of all sand and hot meat hot meat and for road bridge material sandy did you want to address the court this is the tape that we did not award last court uh we had to review you know from the point for his award to go to the town man's call and we did that last year so uh, I'm okay with awarding Mr. Nelson to the county hospital and the other three that did it for the court. Okay. I make a motion to approve. Okay, got Commissioner uh, Della. Uh, motion by Commissioner Brown. Is there a second? <clears throat> second. Second by Commissioner West. Any questions or discussion for Sam? Being up, all in favor say aye. <laughs> Those opposed say your side. Motion carries. Item number 17 discuss and consider approval of fiscal year 20 budget amendment. Commissioner Pearson. We've got a motion by Commissioner Pearson to approve the budget amendment. Uh, is there a second? Okay. Second by Commissioner Melton. Any questions or discussion? Yes, there is one that doesn't really follow the guidelines. Approval, but it's okay. Assistant uh, DA. Needed to move from employees down to Ms. Laney's computer. She did move some of her uh, employees that were supplemented out of that fund into another fund. So the, the fund is available for her. She didn't have any operating costs in her portion of fund. Also, Judge, there's one that is not going to be got play with the one on the street. Uh, $50. $50. Yeah, and uh, when I went when I wrote the review, I, got, I figured it didn't have a priest in the top of it. So uh, I figured you'd go put forward in there. So that is certainly difficult to prove. Of course, you had that, I got caught. 
We do have a motion and a second to approve the budget amendments. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other discussion, questions, discussion? Being done, all in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item number 18 discuss and consider approval of the March 2020 financial investment report of the county treasurer to be entered into the minutes of the commission. Okay. Yeah, the motion by Commissioner Pierce, second by Commissioner Pelton. Any questions or discussion? I'm not sure. And I looked, I looked, which one was that? Did you know what I'm saying? It should be from March. From, from Kenny? From Kenny, yes. You don't have it? Uh, he said he would leave it up there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we have a motion? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I don't have a motion. Motion by Pierce, okay. second by Commissioner Melvin. All in favor of approving the March 2020 financial investment report. County Treasurer say aye. aye. Those opposed say it's not. Motion carried. I've got a copy of the here. I don't know. Now I need to discuss and consider one of the reports submitted by various offices and departments for county government to approve the entry of site in the court's meetings as a matter of record. Yeah, we had uh, one that didn't get the current yet. Yeah. 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 So, is that a motion to approve the one that were submitted? Yes, second. Okay, that motion by Commissioner West, second by Commissioner Brown. Any questions or discussion on the report? Being done, all in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say aye. Motion carries. Is there a motion to adjourn? So we got a motion by Commissioner Pearson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner West. All in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say aye. Motion carries. We are adjourned. <laughs> Can you send me a proclamation? I will.